Now, the first time that the Holy Ghost fell, and, and I understand when we talk about the first time on the day of Pentecost, that the question always comes up, well, well Pastor, what about, uh, uh, what about uh, John the Baptist? Not only John the Baptist, but John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth. When Mary spoke to Elizabeth, that the voice of your salutation rang in my ear and the babe leaped the unborn John the Baptist <laughs> because when Mary opened her mouth from down in her diaphragm as she spoke a voice somehow came over the unborn Jesus and that contact went into the ears of Elizabeth and John the Baptist as we say, got happy in Elizabeth's womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. But not only Elizabeth, John the Baptist came full of the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. But yet, uh, John chapter 7, verse 37, the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood crying, saying, Ho, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believe on me of the Spirit has said, out of his belly shall flow living rivers of living water but he let him know but this spake he that parenthetical verse says but this spake he of the spirit which they that believed on him should receive because the holy ghost was not yet given because jesus was not glorified in other words when he said believe on me as the scripture said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water he was not talking about formula h2o he was talking about the gift of the Holy Ghost. But he said, this is a spirit that you will receive. You can't get it now. The Holy Ghost hadn't been given yet. Yes, these isolated incidents of people being filled with the Holy Ghost. Prophets spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But yet the baptismal measure of the Holy Ghost, which comes to dwell with the believer, had not come until the day of Pentecost. And the Holy Ghost could not come because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Go into the Old Testament, Jesus is represented by the Passover feast because he is our Passover lamb, which is sacrificed for us. But following Passover, they were to proclaim seven Sabbaths, seven weeks, seven times seven, the Sabbath being the seventh day. Seven times seven is 49. But the Lord said the morrow after the seventh Sabbath would be a special feast. And that's what we celebrate as Pentecost Pentecost meaning 50th. So we are Pentecostal church as people identify us. We're not a 50 day church, but we believe in what happened on the 50th day. Jesus was the Passover lamb, but 50 days later comes the Feast of Pentecost. So the Holy Ghost could not predate Jesus just like Passover couldn't predate, or rather Pentecost couldn't predate Passover. First comes Passover, then comes Pentecost. First comes Jesus, then comes the Holy Ghost. So he comes after Jesus has been glorified in your life. And when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, they were doing what the Bible says it filled all the house where they were sitting. They weren't kneeling, they weren't standing, but they were all sitting doing nothing but praising God. So your first opportunity to receive the Holy Ghost is while you are just sitting and praising God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. You would be surprised to know what God would do even before the sermon comes. 
if we would really get involved oh my god i get so tired of it even at my own church in different places where uh, you got the praise team and hey, everybody stand up come on now everybody get in it and, and you got some folks standing there you got others sitting talking to each other I mean, most of you all, you watch television, and you all all acquainted with, with Brother Hen, Benny Hen, and, and Benny Hen, when he gets people on stage, and I, I've never fully understood why the thing of, of knocking folk down three and four times, because by his own word, the only people that get up on the stage are people who have been healed. They don't come up on his stage to get healed. The people on the stage, they are there testifying that they have been healed. Well, when does the healing come? While they are out there in the worship. While they are praising the Lord. So, you know, I've never understood what the knocking down proves. If I've already been healed, then I don't see why you need to knock me down three times. Uh, because God has already done his job. So that's your job. And, and I don't know where y'all got this thing from, that what proves the power of God is how many folk you can lay in the flow. I, I've seen people lay in the flow. They come up sick, and you give them one of them assisted slayings in the spirit, knock them down, and when they get up, they're still sick. But yet I've seen folk who didn't nobody knock them nowhere, but they just believed God. And while the Holy Ghost was moving, caught a hold of faith, and were healed. The first opportunity is while sitting in the worship, praising God. But then that second opportunity to receive the Holy Ghost was what I read from Acts chapter 8. Philip, chosen to be one of what we call the first seven deacons of the church. And you go back and read that thing because... Uh, Growth always brings about problems. Don't you think for a moment that you can have, you know, a lot of times people look and they see a person with a mega church like Bishop Blake who has the largest church in our connection. We have other men who have large congregations. A lot of times people will sit back, oh my. I sure would like to pass a church like that. Not if you can't stand headaches and problems. It's a whole lot different than pastoring 300 and pastoring 3,000. In the days when God, as Bishop Washington used to say, move from addition to multiplication, second chapter of Acts, the Lord added to the church, such as should be saved. And he kept adding. But when you get to chapter 6, it says in the days when the number of believers were multiplied, God moved from addition to multiplication. And at that point, that's when the problems really started. The apostles were doing everything praying for the folk, ministering the word, and after church was over, they start waiting tables, giving to the widows their daily provision. And that's another thing y'all get hung up on. Think every time somebody get in trouble, drunk in the street, person who's been in church five years and never paid tithes one time, everybody, church supposed to help everybody. Yeah, that, that's what we believe. But you read the Bible, you find out different to that. The apostles gave daily to the people because one of the requirements for joining the church is that they had to bring everything they had and lay it at the apostles' feet. Even those that had land, they sold their property. Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead in church. Because not only did they not bring everything, they lied about what they brought. And since didn't nobody have anything but the apostles, 
the people had to come to them daily to get their issuance of daily necessity. And by the time Paul came along later and got saved, became an apostle, and he saw them freeloaders, he said, listen, let me make a new rule. If a man don't work, don't let him eat. And then he talked about those fellows who wanted their grandmothers and their mother and aunts that had become widows. Take them to the church. Let the church take care of them. Paul said, let me tell you, if there are those who won't provide, especially for their own house, they've denied the faith and it's worse than an infidel. God always did, brothers, put the responsibility of providing for the family on the man. Sister, you don't owe it to no man who is able-bodied to let him lay up there in the bed. <laughs> and send you out to work while he's at home all day in the mirror. Please, let me get back to myself. I told y'all I'm <laughs> So in that eighth chapter of Acts, as a result of the fact that the church grew to a point where the apostles needed some help, said, look you out among you, find seven men full of wisdom, full of the Holy Ghost, whom we may appoint over this business, and we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. And they chose seven men. One of them was named Stephen. One of them was named Nicholas. And this proves that even sometimes in the church, you have people that come up in the church but they get carried away on some kind of tangent and go off into false teaching. This fellow named Nicholas, he became one of those self-appointed wonders and he started teaching a contrary doctrine. And in the book of the Revelation, the Lord said, I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitan doctrine came from Deacon Nicholas. But Stephen remained faithful to the word, but he got himself stoned to death. The Lord had already told him, after the Holy Ghost comes on you, be my witnesses, go everywhere. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost part of the world. But they stayed there, and it took persecution that led to the death of Stephen to stop them scattering. Sometimes we don't understand why the Lord allows persecution to come in our life. Sometimes it's because you have become too comfortable in the nest. He has told you to do something else. And you won't do what he told you. So he lets some things come and begins to stir you like the eagle stirs up a nest. So after the persecution which led to the death of Stephen, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Now when he gets to Samaria, he finds that there is a city that is under the control of a fellow named Simon. Simon the sorcerer. Simon the hoodoo. Simon the necromancer, Simon the charmer, uh, Simon the wizard, Simon the warlock. Yeah. He had bewitched the city with his sorceries. And the people gave heed to him. And they recognized him as the great power of God. Mm. And, and, and it is something how people don't open their eyes many times 
Blessed are your eyes for they see. Some of us are so busy listening at what we hear that in a case where we ought to open our eyes and see, Simon bewitched the city. He was giving everybody advice. Just like that, uh, those news columnists. You know, that was D. Abbey and that was another one. People writing. So my, how can I how can I hold my marriage together? How how can I keep my husband? And getting advice from somebody who had had five. <laughs> it don't make sense to ask somebody how to do something that they themselves don't know how to do. Asking a gypsy how do I get rich? Somebody don't even have anything and they're going to tell you. The preachers, I'll, I'll even bring it home closer than that. And bishops, please don't, don't get angry with me. But, but, you know, that's come a shift now. This is the day of the mega church. A mega church is defined as a church that has at least 2,000 in attendance every Sunday. And it don't make sense for you to be looking for somebody to show you how to build your congregation. And they've never built one themselves. My dad used to say that, you know, God gives different gifts. He said, if you give a man who is a 10-member pastor, you give him a church with 150 members, he going to cut that thing down till it gets to the number that he can handle. <laughs> if you're trying to build up, you don't need somebody advising you who's got a spirit to. You're getting ready to build a house. You know, back in the time we didn't have the kind of expensive buildings we have now. Another thing my dad used to say, you know, he said it takes a lot of time and money and a certain amount of months to build a house. But you can give a fool a crowbar. And he'll tear it down in one night. <laughs> Simon had bewitched them until Philip got there. Philip preached the revival, and the Bible said there was great joy in that city. The one thing about it, before the Holy Ghost comes in, he comes in in an atmosphere of joy. Quit inviting the Lord to your pity party. He ain't coming to no pity party. No matter what we go through, we're supposed to rejoice, even in tribulation. Whatever we're going through, God wants us to learn how to praise our way through it. You're going through something and you're going to sit there, hey, Lord, the Lord know what's going on. He know. Yeah, he knows. But he told you to ask him. My God, he wants you no matter what's going on. You may be ever so weak, but don't you dare let the devil see you admitting weakness. Let the weak say, I'm strong. And then you get excited about this thing that you have from God and the joy of the Lord. You may be ever so weak, but if you can keep your joy alive, he'll keep sending strength in whatever situation you're in. Philip preached and there was joy in that city. But after a while, the, the Holy Ghost picked him up, carried him out to the Gaza Highway. And he got there just in time as the secretary of the treasury, the Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, came riding along in the chariot, reading out of the book of the prophet Isaiah. And the Lord told Philip, draw near the chariot. Got close enough to hear the man reading, sitting up there reading aloud. Hey, do you understand what you're reading? How can I? Except some man should guide me. Philip got up in the chariot with the man and started at the same scripture. 
hallelujah, and began to preach to him Jesus. Oh, you can say what you want to, but, but, but you know, I believe that this, this, this secretary to the treasurer of the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia, he went back after Philip explained the scripture and baptized him. He goes back to Ethiopia and he carries his new knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I resent anybody who tries to play down the fact that y'all over there worshiping that Jesus slave religion that the white man taught you, brought you over here and you up here in this slave religion. Baby, I'm the African Americans no matter where it came from over here, our first introduction to Jesus wasn't the white man in the hull of a slave ship. Long before that, less than a hundred years after Jesus went back up to heaven, word went to Ethiopia and spread through Africa. And my four parents already knew about Jesus. Hallelujah. This isn't something that's new to us, that was taught to us to keep us in slavery. Our knowledge of Jesus is what broke the chain. Knowing Jesus is the thing that set us free. Knowing Jesus is the thing that have lifted us from the cotton sack. Lifted us from the boss's plantation. Everybody talks about when Koji comes to Memphis, the pretty hats and the clothes and the expensive cars my god if you call this a slave religion let me go on being a slave hallelujah bless the name of jesus sit down y'all i still haven't got to my second name hallelujah hey thank you bless the name of the lord now Philip left the city and left him excited but word filtered back to Jerusalem that Samaria had received the Holy Ghost and they sent Peter and John and when they got to Samaria those folk that had joy those people who had been preached out of their sins by Philip those people who Philip had set free from Simon the sorcerer. And when you really become a child of the Lord, I mean Jesus is a reality in your life. I get sick of this foolishness. I'm saved, but that old woman down the street, I don't know what they sprinkle something on my porch, I think. Uh, somebody. Somebody didn't clip my hair. Done. You can take all the little hair I got. I don't care what you do with it. Sprinkle anything you want on my porch. I'll just, I'll just dance in it. Because when you get saved, oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. When Jesus comes into your life, he breaks the chain of bondage. Philip left town, but Peter and John came. And they did what? Laid hands on them. Now the Bible does not tell us that anybody fell out, and it does not tell us that they spoke in tongues. But it is evident that from the laying on of hands, they received the Holy Ghost. So the first group received the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, sitting and worshiping. The second group in Samaria received the Holy Ghost from the laying on of hands. But there's another group in Acts chapter 10. I can't go through the story about Cornelius, the Roman centurion that prayed 
hallelujah, and gave alms. He was a charitable man. God sent him an angel into his room. But the angel couldn't tell Cornelius what he needed. It's another thing y'all into now, you know. Preacher tell you that the angel was walking with me. The angel, and when I read my Bible, the Bible says that this mystery of salvation it's something that the angels desire to look into, but they are not able. Angels who have never fallen in the sin, degradation, and despair. I got a song in my heart that angels can't sing. Redeemed, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Angels don't understand this. So all the thing that the angel did was came and told Cornelius where to get a preacher. And Peter came from Joppa, walked into the room. He evidently didn't want to be there because he kind of went into his sermon all in an informal way. Cornelius let him know about he was fasting and fell into a trance and, 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 and the Lord sent an angel and told me to get you. And so I've got my friends and family and we're all here to hear what the Lord has commanded us of thee. And Peter starts off, well, the word I say, you know, I've got nothing new to tell you. This thing started at Jerusalem and was uh, published throughout all Judea. And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Peter just kind of goes on informally. And when they start hearing Jesus after a while, something happened. The Bible says there in Acts 10 44 while Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word let me tell you it's dangerous to start talking about Jesus <laughs> my God when you start talking about Jesus the Holy Ghost shows up demons get nervous the power of God goes to work my God don't don't tell me about some kind of a nameless God of the cosmos don't tell me about what you learned about Eastern mysticism. Now, don't tell me nothing about, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. That, that Jesus is a founder of a world religion, but there is also uh, Muhammad, and there is Buddha, and there's Zoroaster, and, and there's Laodice, and there's Sun Yun Moon, and there's this one, and there's that one. Listen, let me tell you something. There's salvation in no other, for there's no other name given under the heavens whereby men must be saved and as I live said God every knee things in heaven things in the earth things under the earth every knee should bow and every tongue confess when you begin to talk about Jesus look for the Holy Ghost to show up when I talk about Jesus the atmosphere changes in the room when I start talking about Jesus my pains disappear when I start talking about Jesus it doesn't even matter what folk are trying to do to me I can lift above it and walk on their gossip and dance on their lives when I talk about Jesus While he yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. Now, now you got three. The first group received the Holy Ghost doing what? Sitting and worship. The second group received the Holy Ghost how? A laying on of hand. Now the third group gets the Holy Ghost what? While the word is going forth. Th that's one more. Acts 19. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Well, we haven't so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And well, how were you baptized? You should have heard something about the Holy Ghost when you were baptized. Uh, well, we were John the Baptist converts. Uh, we got ordained, or rather, we got uh, baptized under the teaching of John the Baptist. And John wasn't a Southern Baptist or an Independent Baptist nor National Baptist. He was a baptizing Baptist. In 
and don't get me wrong I'm not criticizing the Baptist because brothers that's one of our problems we let folks stay dry too long as soon as they hear the Word of God uh, we don't even wait we don't have baptizing services anymore every Sunday when church is over we have somebody already in the pool elders in the pool and missionaries standing by on one side and deacons on the other because when people say I believe in Jesus they need to be dipped you don't hear what I'm saying Paul found this group that uh, said well we've been baptized but we don't have the Holy Ghost so he gets in the water and takes them under one more time and coming up out of the water it's true that he laid his hands on them but they received the Holy Ghost at the baptismal service coming up out of the water and that gives me my fourth time you receive the Holy Ghost either sitting and worshiping from the laying on of hands while the word is going forth or you can get him coming up out of the water but whenever you get him you need you need the Holy Ghost you don't need to be trying to operate in some kind of false stuff that somebody taught you talking about when you got saved you already got it all you got to do is develop your prayer language and they got you up getting up in the morning and going in the bathroom ah, da, 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 da. no 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 you wait because when you really get filled you don't need nobody to tell you what to say because way down in your belly will flow rivers higher hallelujah I, I didn't intend to do this I didn't intend to do this but, but there are about a thousand folk in here that know you don't have the Holy Ghost I want you to come here and if there's too, not enough room here, spread across the front or out there in that middle aisle. But I want you to come praising God. I want you to come with your mouth open. I want you to come praising Him. Be honest with God. Come now, come now, come now. Come on, come on. Don't you worry about who's looking at you. You come here now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on! He's pouring it out! He's pouring out! your hands. The Holy Ghost is here. Lift your hands to him. Open your mouth to him. And they all were filled. The end But these are being filled. He's refilling you there at your seat. Open your mouth and worship him. Give him glory. The Holy Ghost is most here. And they all were filled and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But they might, they're already speaking in tongues. And they all were filled and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
the name of Jesus and they that gladly receive his word were baptized. Open your mouth and give him praise. As you praise him, he baptizes you. And you're being endued with power from on high. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. There he is. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And they all began to speak with tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Give utterance in here, Lord. Give utterance in here, Lord. Fill us again. Fill me again. Fill me. Fill me again. Oh, the Holy Ghost is falling. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your glow. Have your way. Fill us preachers again. Fill the missionaries again. Fill the bishops again. Fill the laity again. Oh! Oh! Hey! Oh, Baba Nana! 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 Oh, Oh! 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 Now you and your seats turn around and get one person by both hands and look them in the eye and say, be filled again. Be filled again. And praise Him until it does it. God take us to a new dimension. Not just another level, but a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, you lying wonder. Go from here. You have no right. You've been rebuked. And we give you glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, Shaha. And as he fills us, he heals us. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body.